to another episode of Going Back to the Basics, where we're going to take exercises out of uh, instructional manuals, instructional books, and walk through them together as if we're the student and uh, see, you know, how does it all turn out? You know, does it work? Does it not work? Of course, they're supposed to work. So, well, did we work or did we not work? I guess is the answer. Hope you enjoy it. We're going to try to do a lot of things, and uh, I hope it's just about as fun to uh, to watch as it is for me to do because it's fun to go back and well, it's fun to go back to the basics. Enjoy. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Back to the Basics. <clears throat> I was looking for, uh, there was an exercise I wanted to do. Uh, I mean, many of you guys know I don't have a hold fast, hold down tool for the thing of life. I, I wanted to make one. I thought that'd be an, uh, a, a good, easy exercise. And uh, I was looking in the two books that we've been talking about so far, um, Lord John Lord Bacon's uh, book and the... Um, uh, blacksmithing for the homestead or something like that and neither one of them actually had uh, uh, an exercise or anything that related to, to making one of those so I decided to uh, to look around at some other books I don't want to add too many books to, to the mix and I couldn't find one actually <laughs> not, not in the four or five that I had already downloaded um, so in the, but in that process that's the point in that process I came across this this work alright so it's black uh, practical blacksmithing by M. T. Richardson, uh, 1888, 190-something, that, that kind of era. And there's four volumes of this. And this is a decent, and you can download this. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a link to it. Um, download the four different volumes. Uh, it's, I think it's a pretty cool book. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of words, right? There's a lot of, you know, he explains and talks a lot in, in the book. The, it's not a how-to, though. There's not a whole lot of exercises and things like that. But um, he does have a lot of different things throughout the book that you can make so it's it's it's, it's kind of a little weird the three volumes are really not in a sequential order as in volume one is basics volume two is it, it there's kind of a mix of everything advanced to to uh, to intermediate all the way through that's just my opinion of the book uh, let's just kind of go through the um, the preface and the preface uh, oh yeah, the other the preface in general says uh, this is a this is a culmination of, of a lot of blacksmith's input, and uh, somebody might be able to write a better book. But this is the best I could do, and and I think I've done a good job. That's basically what he's saying in that. The introduction is like a novel in itself. I don't know how many pages that is, but um, here are the table of contents from all four volumes. First volume doesn't have a table of contents. It doesn't. At least the, that one I downloaded didn't. All right, so I can't tell you what's in that. But this is a good example because you're going to see it's all over the place. Uh, volume 2, uh, iron and steel, bolt and rivet clippers, chisels, drills and drilling, fullering, swaging, miscellaneous tools, blacksmith shears, emery wheels, and grindstones. All right, I'm just saying it's all over the place, but it's all good information when the, the entire four-volume set is. Uh, volume 3. Blacksmith tools, wrenches, welding, brazing, soldering, steel and its uses, forging iron, making chain swivels, and plow work. Volume 4, last one, uh, miscellaneous carriage irons, tires, cutting, bending, welding, and setting, setting axles, axle gauges, thimble, skeins, resetting old springs, making bobsleds, tempering tools, bolts, nuts, etc., steel working, welding, etc., table of iron and steels. So again, as a four volume set, it's I think it's a pretty good um, uh, resource. And the, the reason that I'm introducing this book to you um, is because while I was looking, I came across something I haven't, I haven't found. And I heard it mentioned once I was watching, Gary Houston was one of my mentors um, when I started, and he was making a set of tongs, and he goes, you know, there's a way to do this out of one piece. And but I forgot how to do it, and I came and I was wondering what you know because he was kind of making that on one piece. He put a tongue on each end and and then cut it, and, but uh, he cut it in half and then drew out the reins and all that. Uh, so I, I, ever since then, this is a couple of years ago anyway. Um, it's like what did he mean by that? And I finally found um, what he was talking about. It was in this volume, I think, it was, or in this book. It's, I think it was in volume three, and that's the first project we're going to do. But this is a decent book to read. It's a good reader, and there's a lot of cool. This is, there's not a lot of step-by-step -step illustrations, but there's a lot of things in there that um, that I think 
are going to help a lot, uh, all of us. So we'll add that to the library. It's Practical Blacksmithing by M.T. Richardson. And there's four volumes. They're online. You should be able to download them without buying them. You can buy them, though. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a, I, saw, I found one. It's, it's not very expensive either, but it was all four volumes in one book. So you can look and find that. Uh, and that's it. Welcome to this book, book three. Let's get on with our first exercise.